I have to say, it's my first disappointment today on Laser Nike. So hey, all drama aside, I'm not disappointed with the bolt. Bolt works just the way it's supposed to. I love that laser. However, I was hoping that the result of engraving glass with a CO2 laser was going to produce a better result. And the more I've tested it, the more I realize it comes out not too bad, but it doesn't come out great. There are a lot of different videos on YouTube with different makes or models of CO2 lasers, diode lasers, various different lasers, including UV lasers. And if you go back and look really carefully when they show up the piece of glass and show you the end result of the engrave, you're going to find that compared to a professionally engraved glass, the result of the CO2 or the diode laser provides more of a fragmented result. It's actually not a very high quality engrave. It's not terrible. And of course you can do all kinds of different things, engraving glass, maybe using Surmark, engraving photos, and then negative engraving them to get a nice grayscale type photo result on a piece of glass. But if you're just trying to put a logo or a design on the side of a glass, it'll etch it or engrave it, but the outcome or the quality is nowhere near the quality you get from commercial engraving. Let's take a look at this glass. You can see it's a Canadian Club engraved glass. And yep, you know where I got it. <laughs> but hopefully, and I'll check this before I upload the video, take a look at how clean that engrave is that says Canadian Club. That is absolutely smooth. There's no cracking whatsoever, no inconsistency on the engrave. I imagine they probably used an acid-based paste to do it. I'm not sure, but they definitely did not do this with a CO2 laser. Here's the best result I can get using a CO2 laser. It doesn't look terrible, but you can see the inconsistency, or I guess what you might call the fracturing of the glass, so to speak. There's a tiny bit of chipping here on the right side, not much, there's two or three spots. So it's not that this is entirely chipped. But even after sanding it a little bit, what you'll see there is you can see lines. And it's not the engraved lines, by the way, because I engraved it the other direction. It's just the result that you get time after time after time. And here's the big difference. Say I poured myself a Diet Pepsi, and yep, it's diet. And no, I don't like it. But I guess as you get older, you're not supposed to have as much sugar. So my wife makes me drink it. This is what that engraved looks like when I poured myself a Pepsi. You can see how clear, vibrant, how white it is, and how consistent that engrave is that shows up. This is the result of the engrave from the CO2 laser. It's a little more muted. It doesn't show up as well. And you can see that the consistency in the grave is not there. It's just not there. Engraving glass is one of those things I was looking forward to trying and I've been putting it off, you know, for the last few months. I have a few glasses here and as you can see, I didn't buy any glasses. These are, these are all the glasses from my kitchen. So my wife's not going to be happy when she goes to pour a Pepsi later. Anyways, I started testing on it because I got an order or a quote for an order on a couple of dozen of these tumblers with a logo on the side. And that's what spurred me to kind of pull the glasses off the shelf and start working on it. I went through a number of different tests, you folks know I always do, various different power levels, different speeds, and I did both sets of tests with a one and a half inch lens on the bolt as well as recreated those tests with a two and a half inch lens. I also defocused the lenses one millimeter either way, trying to get that result that would give me the cleanest or smoothest engrave with the most minimal amount of chipping. And in all fairness, very few of them didn't have tiny chips here or there. Most all of them did, regardless of what power levels. And you have to be careful when you're testing glass, because if your power level is too high, you're going to crack that glass, which I did. At the end of the day, it appears that the one and a half inch lens is the best one. It gives me the most consistent engrave, 
with the least amount of chipping at whatever power levels I've compared it to. And I do have a set of final results or settings, which I'm going to give you right now. That way you can give it a shot at home. You know, before you go out and buy any glasses, just sneak them out of the cupboard, <laughs> give them a shot. And in fact, I'll show you what it's going to look like when you engrave that glass. So my settings for the Thunderbolt for engraving glass, 500 millimeters per second, 25% power min and max. You want it in fill mode and you want 400 lines per inch, one pass, bi-directional. And unlike anything else I normally do, make sure you have high air turned on. Yep, that's your result. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it well on the camera. I'm going to zoom you in a bit, but you can see you've got a number of spots here where you've got some chipping. Very few, mind you, but still, that's the outcome or the effect. I mean, it feels nice on your finger. It's not bumpy or anything, but the result of the engrave is just not a flat, consistent, you know, frost through that engrave. It's very inconsistent. And the best test is holding it up to a mirror because that way you can actually see the sparkle of the various different spots where you've got chipping happening. And if you're not sure, run your fingernail through it. It's a reasonably nice engrave, but I don't think I'd be able to sell that engrave. And if I bought this glass for me, I would be expecting the Canadian Club engrave when I received the, the glass. And if I didn't, I'd probably send it back. So, hey, you've got my settings. Grab a glass, give it a try and see what you think. And by all means, you folks know I'm still only about seven months new to lasers. If you've got some great settings for a CO2 laser, especially a Thunderbolt that you think will provide a better result than what you've seen here today, I'd really love to see it in the comments. In fact, I think a lot of folks would. Either way, this is not a bad thing or a good thing about the, the laser bolt itself or about engraving glass. It's just that based on what I can see on other YouTube videos and what I've been able to produce here, that's about the best result you're gonna get on a glass. Kind of acceptable, but definitely not acceptable to sell, in my view. Just my opinion. Hey, thanks for hanging around again today. I hope it was helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment. Have a great week, a great Canada Day. Independence Day in the US. Be kind to each other, and I'll see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.